Hi guys, welcome to the Patreon channel. Thank you for becoming a Patreon. And let's talk about ultra cycling. And let's talk about eating. It's a tough subject, guys. Eating while ultra cycling. So let's start nice and simple by saying you're going to hear a lot of different opinions. You've got Sally at Weight Watchers, yeah? You've got John, the ultra cyclist, Freddie, the PT, Sarah, the nutritionist. They are all going to have different opinions across the board. I don't want you to take anyone too seriously. You need to really think about what works for you and what doesn't. So if what I tell you doesn't work for you, contact a nutritionist, go elsewhere, adapt this to make it work for you. That's the most important thing. So nutrition, what is nutrition? Nutrition is eating and drinking. Let's keep it simple. I'm not going to baffle you. I'm not going to be one of these PTs that... Oh, are you an endomorph, an ectomorph? What body type are you? Or what percentage of fat are you? No, let's keep it simple. Nutrition is eating, it's drinking, yeah? We're gonna, everyone's unique. What I eat is gonna be different to what you eat. How much I need to eat will be different to how much you need to eat. That simple, guys. How do we judge nutrition when it comes to ultra cycling? So we're gonna keep it really nice and simple. And I actually wrote down a list of how I'm going to do this in order to keep it simple. So calories. You've heard of calories before, yeah? You've seen calories. They're everywhere. OK. Literally, calories are a unit of energy you take from food. It's like kilojoules as well. Yeah. But we're talking about calories. Let's keep it simple. So. Calories come in many different ways, shapes or form, like the three things that we talk about when we talk about nutrition are carbs, fats and proteins. We're going to go into that a little bit later. But for the minute, the easiest way to manage your ultra cycling is to think about calories in and calories out. So when we talk about calories, a daily, the average man daily needs about two and a half thousand calories. The average woman needs two thousand calories. So if you were a man and you decided to eat 2000 calories every day for a week, then by the end of that week, you will be three and a half thousand calories down, which equates to a pound of fat. Yeah, that's simple. That's how you lose a pound a week. Make sure you're 500 calories down every week. Two and a half thousand for a male, average male is across the board going to be very different for the average male because one bloke could be sitting there in his office working for BT, you could have another bloke out on a building site lugging bricks around all day. So the guy lugging bricks around a day it will use more calories than the guy in the office. It is that simple. So let's put that into cycling, okay? So I know roughly, and I'm gonna talk, use me in ex as, I'm gonna use me as an example on this one. I know that for every hour I ride, endurance pace, I burn roughly around 500 calories. If I'm going for it, like TT pace, it'll be seven, 800 calories. If I'm chilling out on a club run, it's going to be three, 400 calories. I know that because that's something for years and years of experience. I know that I'm 78 kilos and I know roughly that's what I'm burning. Uh, one mistake I've made is not eating enough in the past and knowing what you're burning is really good mentally and physically to keep you going. So, Let's talk about how I plan my strategy when it comes to nutrition, ultra cycling and bike packing. So I know how much I burn an hour. I know my daily amount that I need to maintain. So it should be pretty simple, but it's not, unfortunately. And let's start this strategy talking about water before food, OK, because you really, really need water when you're riding. You know, as crazy as that sounds, you need water to live. You do. <laughs> so water. OK, I'm going to tell you how I manage water. So let's talk about a 300 mile day that I'm going to do. Yeah. So in the morning, I'll wake up at 3 a.m. Yes, I'm a very early riser. And the first thing I'll do is go down the stairs and I'll have a coffee and a litre of water. Yeah, then I'll fill up my water bottles for my bike and there'll be 2.6 litres of water in those bottles. OK, so I know roughly for me, day to day living and for my cycling to cycle six hours. So we're going to start this in a six hour stint. I need roughly around four litres. So I've already had one litre when I woke up Then I've got 
2.6 in my bottle, so three 800 ml bottles that are going to last me the riding. Then I need to top up when I get home again. So I've already had a litre, I've left the house and I've got 2.6 litres in three bottles. I need to space this out of a six hours. So I don't do this in mileage, I do this in time and not elapsed time. So that doesn't account for times you stop, that's riding time. So for every hour and a half I ride, I have a bottle of water. And then after four and a half hours, I've had my last, last bottle, I'm feeling super light, super fast. And I eventually get home after the six hours and I get a chance to restock. So I've done a hundred miles. But when I get home, I've only had 3.6 litres of water. So I am going to chuck in probably about a litre and a half to make up the shortfall from last time and then get myself another litre in front for the next six hour block. Then I re repeat the process again. So every hour and a half, take the water. When I get home, really stock up on water and then do this three times. And I know I'm drinking enough there. How do you know when you're drinking enough? How do you know when you're not drinking enough? So for me personally, I find that if I'm drinking too much, I will wee more than twice in half an hour. Yeah, and it will be clear. So that's the first way of telling you're having too much. How can you tell you're not having enough? Well, you either stop weeing altogether, or when you do wee, it comes out very yellow. So if you get to that point, you've gone too far. You need to stay on top of your drinking. It's a hard thing to do, guys. You drink a lot of water, you sweat a lot, and you lose a lot of salts, which brings me to my next part of drinking. So you need to make sure that you're having enough of minerals and nutrients to make sure that your muscles have what they need. And salt is a very big part of that. So a lot of people I know will just put a dash of salt in each of their bottles, which is fine. It makes it taste absolutely rotten, but it's fine. I personally use electrolytes. So these were kindly given to me by Named Sport. I really like these. Obviously, I'm not going to put one in every bottle because that's a little bit too much and it will upset my stomach. And unfortunately, that would be not a very nice thing on the side of the road to have to do. So I use these because they have the salt content, they have magnesium, potassium, they have all the special things I need. You don't have to go with this brand. You could use, I don't know, wiggle hydration tablets, you know, the little circular tubes. Yep, you could use them instead. What it is, is just getting a bit of salt in. But I would really make sure you're not having too many because it will upset your stomach. So I try, I know when I stop at home and I'm restocking and have a proper meal that I'm getting salt in my food. Then I know when I'm out, if I have two of these, yeah, crossed over three bottles, that's not going to upset my stomach, but that's going to provide me the salt I need to keep my legs going, to keep me feeling fresh. Because you'll soon know when you haven't had enough salt, because your legs will get tired, they'll hurt and they'll get crampy. So having salt and stuff like that in your drinks will stop that happening, obviously, if you're not pushing too hard. So that makes a really big difference using these. But like I say, don't have too many or it'll start to feel ill. If you start to get the shits or your stomach starts to twist a little bit, I'd recommend just having water with a pinch of salt in instead. But in a perfect world, we'd always use these, but you do have to manage how many of them you have. <sighs> Drinking is so tough to keep on top of, guys. and. The thing, the thing with ultra cycling is you're eating a lot as well. So you actually have to drink more water to make sure that you're processing food properly enough. Have you ever felt nauseous and had your stomach turn and had the shits? Yeah, that's because a lot of the time it's dehydration. Yeah. So on warmer days, you might need to drink more. Colder days, you might end up drinking less. But on those colder days, be wary because you need to stay on top of your nutrition, even though it's cold. On the warmer days, yes, you will have to drink more. And I would either take an extra bottle out for that or maybe do shorter stints. So that's water. And do not forget that one. That one's so important. But let's talk about food. How do we manage food on long rides? So I'm not going to, I'm going to talk about calories to start with and how I manage calories throughout my day. So we're going to use this 300 mile day as a an example. So I've done it with water, I'll do it with food now. So in the morning, when I wake up, just like the water, I have some breakfast. I try and put, before a day of ultra cycling, about 1,200 calories in for breakfast. 
I know, that's a huge amount of calories in, but you're gonna burn it quickly. And then when I go out, I take 1,200 calories with me. So all in all, that's 2,400 calories. That's nearly my daily amount in one six hour stint I've done, okay? So I've had my breakfast and my body's feeling really good. It's ready to go. I go out on the bike. I might feel a little bit bloated, but that'll soon ease off. And then every hour I try and put 250 calories in. But wait, Robbie, you said you were burning 500 every hour. Yes, I'm only putting 250 in. So your body has this natural mechanism of storing calories, of storing energy. So I know personally doing, going through some testing, talking to some experts, my body stores about 3000 calories. It's lovely. That's a really good bit of energy. It's really good glycogen. My muscles are ready to go. So I know I can store that, but I don't want to eat 500 calories an hour because I'd start to get ill because that's eating a little bit too much. So I have a big meal to start with and then literally just 250 calories every hour. And the first few hours are tough because I don't want to eat. I just want to ride, but you have to force yourself to do that. So after six hours, I get home and then I try and eat another 1,200 calories. Uh, six hours would be about lunchtime. So I really recommend having regular meals. So your breakfast, your lunch and your dinner. So six hours, boom, done 100 miles. Now I'm coming home. Awesome. So literally I smash in another 1,200 calories and then I take 1,200 calories out with me again. You can see how I'm really tuned into doing six hour stints. If I was out on the road bike packing, then it would be me stopping at a store and doing the same thing. But I'm gonna use home as an example. So I get home, another 1,200 calories is a meal. Then I take 1,200 calories out with me on the bike. Boom, done again. Then the next stint, so I've done 200 miles. Literally, I'm getting to the end of this 3,000 backup calories I've had and I might need to eat a little bit more or I might need to slow down. Yet again, I chuck in 1,200, 1,500 calories and then I, I take 1,200 out with me again. It's this simple process of just managing your food. And this has taken me years to learn and it'll be very different for you than it is for me. You'll find sometimes you feel like you're overeating. You'll find times you'll feel like you're undereating. How do you know when you're overeating and undereating? Well, firstly, you're going to start to feel a bit ill if you're overeating. And if you're undereating, you're going to start to feel ill and hungry. It's about getting it right. And it'll take you a very, very, <coughs> it'll take you a very, very long time to learn. But that's a really good way of having a nutrition strategy, but we haven't even got halfway through what we're talking about yet, guys. So now we need to talk about foods and types of food that you'd use. So foods drop into kind of three categories, guys, okay? So you've got your carbs, you've got your fats, and you've got your proteins. I know a lot of you have probably heard this, but there's some very interesting things. So we're going to go back to calories. Okay, so if I'm correct, I think that every gram of carbohydrate stores four calories, every gram of fat stores nine calories. I think it's roughly about that, it's about double. Don't let that phase you into becoming a keto dieter, okay? But anyway, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So carbs, fats, proteins, let's talk about them. Carbohydrates, they convert into glucose really easily. Glucose is what powers your muscles, boom. So carbs power your muscles, yeah? That simple. We need carbs. We love carbs. Carbs are everything. There's different types of carbs. You've got slow release carbs, you've got quick release carbs. A good example of a slow release carb, oats. Yeah, oats, bread, stuff like that. Perfect, really good slow release carbs. Uh, quick release carbs, energy bars, energy gels, things like that. Uh, Haribo, quick release carbs, slow release carbs, we're talking something like rice. So the more stable stuff, complex carbohydrates, are your slow release carbs, your quick release carbs, are stuff like your sugary carbs, so your Haribo, your fruit, your gels, your energy bars, all these things. Uh, like I say, I think it's four calories per gram carbohydrate, so you can get away with eating a lot. Some people recommend you should eat like 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour you ride. I wouldn't try and overthink it that much. I would literally just focus on the calories, especially with ultra distance riding. 
because you will be using calories from fats as well because the pace isn't as high as let's say a time trial. Fats, so fats are a lot more calorie dense. Uh, I mentioned earlier about ketogenic. Uh, a lot of people I see riding ultra distance, oh, I'm keto. Keto means high fat diet, low carb. So you barely eat any carbs, you eat a lot of fat. Uh, it makes you very lean uh, because carbs hold water and fat doesn't. So people are like, oh, I lost weight super quick. Nope, you lost water super quick. You didn't lose weight super quick. And uh, yeah, it's one way people like to do it. I see a lot of guys uh, who do a lot of racing, um, keto. You never really see them high up in the rankings though. Just making an observation there. Uh, fats are very important. Fats will turn into glycogen. Glycogen powers your muscles, but it takes them a lot longer to do that. They're a great backup. They're your storage, yeah? See these as your backup. See these as your storage. They will not be instant energy for you though. Proteins. We love protein, guys. Call the vets. These swans are looking sick. Protein repairs and builds your muscles. So when you see all these guys going to the gym, oh, I need a protein shake. Yeah, all this. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you do need a protein shake. Protein is recovery. I'd recommend getting some protein in. How much protein dare you ask? Okay, so I'm going to keep this one really simple. I weigh 78 kilos. For every kilo I weigh, I should have 1.5 to 2 grams of protein. So I roughly aim for about 140 grams of protein a day, whether I'm bodybuilding, whether I'm ultra cycling, that is what I aim for. And that seems to work for me. You are going to be a different weight. You're going to have a different metabolism. So I don't know where you'll be at, but it will be trial and error again. But a good place to start is 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilo that you weigh. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to manage carbs, fats and proteins into this 300 mile day that I keep talking about. So the first thing in the morning, I don't really need to worry about recovery. So I go very carb heavy. Yeah, really carb heavy, you know, carb heavy with some fats in as well. So for me, a good breakfast before starting a big day's up cycling, granola and Greek yogurt. Yeah, full fat Greek yogurt. Why the heck not? Smash it out. Yeah, why not? Granola, really good source of slow release energy. Same with porridge and things like that. If you're going to look at stuff like toast, um, I would avoid wholemeal and I'd go for white because wholemeal will make you want to go to the toilet a lot as it contains a lot of fibre. So when I wake up in the morning, we're talking really basic meals, guys, like granola, yogurt, porridge, stuff like that. Yeah, But 1,200 calories of porridge is a lot. It's like more than 300 grams of porridge. That's insane. So granola, really dense calories. Same with the Greek yogurt, really dense high calories there. And it's quite healthy for you as well. Okay, so we're starting to ride. And now I need to think about what I need to be eating while I'm riding. So Named Sport, thank you again. These are quick release energy bars, about 150 calories per bar. I quite like them. I'll take one of these uh, and I'll take one of them. That's 320 calories. That's another 200. It's 150. Yeah, as you can see, for six hours, I'm roughly taking about that much. That's huge, guys. That's a lot of food. So those two are quite light in calories. So that'll be for the first hour one, hour two, three, four, five, boom. That's simple, guys. You think that seems excessive, but it's not. And trust me, if you're not eating it, you'll soon feel like you're not. So there's a reason why I've gone for these, and there's a, a really good reason why that. So I always start with quite quick energy foods. So stuff like this will be after my first hour. But then after that, I still feel as though my muscles are getting tired and they will need protein eventually. They will need recovery. So earlier I mentioned about getting the right amount of protein in. So granola and Greek yogurt isn't heavy on protein, but a protein and oats bar is. So like I said, I aim for about 140 grams of protein per day. So if I can get about 20 in my breakfast, 20 on a snack while riding, 20 in my lunch, 20 in my afternoon, maybe another 20 in the afternoon, 20 in my evening meal, 20 before bed, then I've roughly hit about 140. You can't just go, oh, I need 140 grams of protein today. I'm going to have it all straight away in the morning. Doesn't work like that. You've got to space it. You can only digest 
protein about every four hours. It takes time to digest it. it, takes a lot of water. It actually takes a lot of calories to digest protein. So space it out amongst the day. Your carbs, same again, space them out. A lot of carbs in this, a lot of carbs in this. You've got to space them out every hour because you can only digest a certain amount of carbohydrates. If you haven't had enough carbohydrates, you're going to find a few things happening. You're going to feel really tired. You're going to feel hungry and you'll probably wheel up because you're not holding the water in the carbohydrates. So yeah, again, this is how I manage it. So I've had 1,000 calories in the morning, 1,250 roughly, where I'm having it hour one, two, three, four, five, and then six, the, the sixth hour, I'm back home, or I'm at a shop where I'm eating a main meal again, restocking my water, and then I'm doing the same, five bits of food, literally, for the hours in between, one, two, three, four, and five. It is that simple, but I want to leave you with a few basic rules that will really, really help you. <laughs> so, rule number one, you need to eat what works for you. Just because these work for me, they don't necessarily mean they'll work for you guys. Nutrition is so unique, it's so personal. That's why you don't get many, many videos about how like I'm talking now, yeah? The next thing is, you've heard this a million times, guys, and I'm going to say it because it's so real. Eat before you're hungry, drink before you're thirsty. I know that you've had a massive breakfast and you're an hour in and you really don't want to have to eat one of these, but you've got to. I know it's not simple. You've got to keep on top of it because hour four and five, if you haven't had that first snack, man, you're going to be hungry and man, you're going to start feeling like crap real quick. Your power's going to go down. Your heart rate's going to go up. You're just going to be absolutely all over the shop, yeah? Okay, so the next rule, guys. Every day is a school day when it comes to nutrition. You are constantly going to be changing. You are constantly going to be learning. And you will probably never get it 100% right. It has taken me like five years to come up with a nutrition plan recently, which actually works really well for me. One which doesn't upset my stomach. One that I can eat a lot of food and one that I can just manage really well. You know, eating is the toughest bit of ultra cycling. So really take the time to learn, okay? That's so important. So three really basic rules there. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean you should. Next, eat before you're hungry, drink before you're thirsty. Next, you need to make sure that you're learning all the time and trying different things because your nutrition is gonna be the key to bike packing. It's the key to ultra racing. It's not about power unless you can power your muscles, yeah? Have a good mix of food, try different things, keep an eye on your calories while you're riding. You know, you're gonna be learning so much. This is such a difficult video for me to do because I burn a different amount of calories to you. I eat different foods to you you'll burn different amount of calories to me. You know, it's something that you're gonna to have to spend a lot of time learning, but hopefully you've taken away some really good advice from that, yeah? And just make sure that you stay on top of your food. Probably another really good tip is meals, guys. Don't just snack all day. Try and have time for some proper meals. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, have some proper meals. You need proper food. You can't live on stuff like this all day or you're gonna feel so ill. Trust me, I've tried it and it's awful. You know, even if you're bike packing, you're racing, stop at a garage, get a proper sandwich, have a sit down, have coffee, stay on top of it. The last thing I just wanna mention is caffeine. You know, like if you need it, have it. You know, don't stress about it. Drink as much coffee as you want. It's soon gonna go through your system, guys, okay? One thing I, I made a big mistake of doing recently was having a nutrition plan and I didn't put coffee in it and I just became very, very tired. I didn't realise how much caffeine I actually took away throughout the day in coffee because I drink a lot of coffee. So guys, hopefully that's helped you. I want to try and to do I want to try and do two videos every week about things on my Patreon that are really going to help you with your bike packing. That was the first one. I hope you enjoyed it. Ivy, should we say bye to these guys? Do you want to come up and say bye bye? Should we say bye bye? Bye bye guys. Yeah. So we're going to head off now. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys. 
one-on-one -on -one direct messaging on my Patreon. If you've got a question, please ask me. I will help you as much as I can. Yes, I am a qualified PT. Yes, I know a lot about ultra cycling. If I don't know the answer, I'll try and find out. If I'm not confident in that answer that I found out, then I will forward you on to a reputable nutritionist. But please guys, let me know how you're doing. Let me know your thoughts and look forward to talking to you on the next video.